We are agreed. Thank you. We turn now to topical questions. And our first question today is from Colin Smith. Thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government what action it has taken in response to recent delays and cancellations on the ScotRail network. Cabinet Secretary Michael Matheson. President Officer, I have been absolutely clear that the recent performance on our railways has been unacceptable. Consequently, before Christmas, I instructed Transport Scotland to serve a contractual notice on ScotRail that it must prepare and submit a remedial plan to reduce cancellations and improve reliability to contract requirements. I expect ScotRail to set out in the remedial plan how they plan to address these performance issues to ensure they can be realised and the full benefits of the Scottish Government's record investment into a rail network is then received by those service users. Over the festive period, I have been in regular contact with senior officials at ScotRail, at ScotRail Alliance, where I have left them in no doubt that appropriate and swift action was required. There has been a marked improvement since and on Monday the 7th of January and on Tuesday the 8th of January 2019, ScotRail had appropriately trained train crew available for all services. I will continue to monitor this daily to ensure ScotRail meet their training programme to remove train crew cancellations over the coming weeks. However, more than 50% of delays to ScotRail trains last year were caused by Network Rail. So fixing ScotRail's train crew problem will not be enough. It's essential that Network Rail in Scotland should be fully aligned with the Scottish Government's priorities and fully accountable to this Parliament. Only then will it be possible for Scotland's rail system to be managed properly as one system. Indeed, members will be aware that in December 2018, the Office of the Road and Rail found that Network Rail had weaknesses in its planning and capability to recover services following incidents. The ORR has issued a provisional order against Network Rail, which requires it to take urgent action to address these findings. Therefore, both ScotRail and Network Rail need to address these issues that impact on performance to ensure the public receive the services they expect and deserve. Colin Smith. President Officer, months ago in September, ScotRail's performance plummeted to a level which breached the franchise. Instead of taking decisive action yeah. to demand improvements, the Cabinet Secretary issued a waiver to ScotRail, giving them a licence to continue to fail. And not surprisingly, performance got one worse. Last month, I challenged the Cabinet Secretary to stop bailing out ScotRail and start standing up for passengers by at least issuing a remedial notice against ScotRail and demanding a clear remedial plan. Again, the Cabinet Secretary refused to take action and even told Parliament on the 18th of December, and I quote, there are early signs of improvement. In truth, performance was continuing to get worse. Does the Cabinet Secretary not accept that he should have taken action long before now? And will he start to take responsibility for his inaction and apologise to Scotland's hard-pressed rail passengers for the miserable service they are still receiving? Cabinet Secretary. Saying, officer, I very much regret the poor service that customers have experienced from, uh, from ScotRail over uh, recent months. And there's uh, no doubt that further action is required in order to make sure that the uh, contract which the Bellio have uh, for the ScotRail lines is one which they're meeting on a contractual basis. Uh, the member uh, will be aware that uh, a remedial plan is something which requires a breach of the contractual uh, nature of the franchise agreement. And that was identified on the 21st of December and that's when I instructed officials to make sure that a notice was issued to ScotRail. That's exactly what I've done to make sure that they have been called to account for the contract which they are taking forward. In relation to the waiver which has been provided, as a member will be aware, and as I've stated in this chamber on a number of occasions, the full powers of the franchise and the requirements of the franchise remain in place. What the waiver takes account of are the very factors that the ORR report highlighted just before Christmas that have had an impact on ScotRail's performance that it is not able to manage itself. So, for example, the beast from the east, the weather during the summer, and also the impact that they've had from a network rail's performance. All of those factors have an impact on their ability to meet these requirements. And the ORR recognised in that report in December that that's had a significant impact on performance overall. And that's why they were given the 1% waiver to take account of that. Well, what I can assure the member of is that there's absolutely no lack, no lack of determination on my part to make sure that ScotRail 
keep up to the standards that we expect of them as are set out within the contract. And what I'm determined to do is to make sure that we address that, and that's the remedial plan which will assist us in making sure we deal with that. But what I also think is important is that we're honest with the travelling public, is that you can address issues in ScotRail, but you also need to address the other half of a rail network, and that's the infrastructure element when it comes to our railway infrastructure. And in some months, it's been up to 70% of delays are being caused by network rail. That is unacceptable, and why action also needs to be taken to improve their performance so we can get performance improvements right across the board within the rail, work, rail network in Scotland. Colin Smith. The Cabinet Secretary knows that had he not issued the waiver, he could have issued a remedial notice far earlier yeah. than he did. Now, eventually, he says he issued a remedial notice on Christmas Eve to ScotRail due to a franchise breach in relation to cancellations because, uh, because uh, as everyone knows, also because of a fall in punctuality, which means they will breach even the new level set by the government when it comes to performance. But given this appalling failure, does the Cabinet Secretary honestly believe, as he said there, that this franchise will meet its performance targets as set out in the franchise? Yes or no? If the answer is yes, can you tell us when? But if the answer is no, when will he finally bring an end to this failing franchise? Cabinet Secretary. Well, President Officer, that's exactly what we've got set out within the franchise. There's the commitments that we expect the franchisee to meet, and we'll continue to press them in order to do that. It's clearly not been meeting it in recent times, and there's a need for them to take action in order to make sure that it's going in the right direction, and that's exactly what we will continue to remain focused on doing. And what I'm committed to doing is making sure that ScotRail are held to account for their response to dealing with the standards that they set and have to meet within the contract, within the franchise. But I am also determined to make sure we do everything we can to improve the infrastructure management of the rail network here in Scotland. And I would hope, if the member is really committed to making sure that we deliver the best possible railway system here in Scotland for the travelling public, that he would support the devolution of network rail to this parliament to allow us to do exactly that in a way that allows us to have an integrated network that makes sure that we're able to then, we're then able to deliver the services that passengers deserve. Thank you. I've got four more members who would like to ask a supplementary, so if we can make progress, that would be good. Jamie Green, to be followed by James Dornan. Uh, thank you, Presiding Officer. Can I wish uh, the Chamber a happy new year? Um, I'd also like to pay tribute to the ScotRail staff that actually worked over the festive period to try and keep Scotland moving, but clearly performance at the moment is still unacceptable. The Cabinet Secretary referred to, uh, quite helpfully, the remedial plan that he's put in place with ScotRail, but can I ask if long-term improvements uh, are not forthcoming as a result of this plan, what specific sanctions are available to him, financial or, or otherwise, as currently outlined in the existing franchise arrangement, so that his threats to ScotRail actually have some real teeth and real consequences? Cabinet Secretary. Sign officer, um, uh, can I say that uh, the members asked a helpful question because a key part to the franchise approach that we have for the rail network in the UK is to make sure that the contract is actually utilised in a way that holds the contractor to account. That's exactly why I've issued the order for the remedial notice. That now requires uh, ScotRail to bring forward a remedial plan setting out how they intend to get the services back in line with what is set out within the contract. So they will have to set that detail out and they're given eight weeks in which to do so. So they'll have to submit that plan by around the 18th of February. If they fail to do that, then they are in breach of the contract. And ultimately, for any organisation, when they're in breach of the contract, they could be fined, or at the same time, uh, costs could be uh, increased for certain services which they uh, provide to the taxpayer, or we could actually remove the contract from them. So this has got very serious implications for the contract holder. And a remedial re plan is not something which you would issue just on the basis of a whim of some uh, individual problems on a limited occasions. This is because there has been a series of problems over a period of time that I don't believe is acceptable. So in discussions I've had with ScotRail, they're very clear about how serious this is for them. But they've also assured me that they're determined to do everything they can to make sure they get the services back online, in line with what's expected within the contract. James Dornan to be followed by John Finney. Thank you, President Officer. Uh, Cabinet Secretary, you've, you've mentioned some of the improvements that ScotRail have made, but could you give us a bit more detail about that uh, made over the festive period, the impact they've had, but maybe more importantly, what more ScotRail is doing to help those passengers who have been inconvenienced? Cabinet Secretary. Well, President Officer, the, one of the main challenges which we've had in recent times has been the ability for ScotRail to be able to 
train their staff for the new Hitachi trains, for the new uh, routes which have been introduced as part of a timetable change in uh, December the 9th and also the uh, late arrival of the refurbished uh, uh, high-speed uh, trains, all of which have had their impact on their ability to train staff. Uh, as it stands, uh, just under 900 members of staff need to be trained. Uh, they're now at a point where uh, around 20% or so of those staff are still to be trained. As we go forward, uh, ScotRail will give me an assurance that uh, the number of cancellations which will come about as a result of a shortage of trained crew uh, will continue to decline uh, and they will continue to try and work that number uh, down as we go forward in the coming weeks. And what they will continue to do is be focused on training their staff in order to make sure that at a level of competence that allows us to make sure we minimise the number of cancellations that occur as a result of a lack of avail available crew. John Finney to be followed by Mike Rumbles. Thank you, President Officer. Uh, Cabinet Secretary, we seem to be here repeatedly. We're hearing all the same stuff. I've lost count of the number of plans, improvement plans. This one's now a, a remedial plan. Well, uh, plans are of no interest to uh, constituents in the far north line who finish a hard day's work to find that the train that they hope to take them home has been cancelled. What is the level of mismanagement that's required of a Belio before you'll take control of this situation? Cabinet Secretary. President Officer, the... Uh, the way in which the provisions are set out within the franchise agreement uh, give us the power to be able to direct ScotRail in order to bring forward plans in order to address issues where they have failed in order to deliver proper services. Uh, what we are doing is holding them to account for that particular contract. Uh, the remedial plan is one of the most serious actions which we can take in requiring them to make sure that they start to address these issues in an effective, systematic way. They are very clear about how serious this is for them as the franchise holder. And what we now need to do is see the detail of their plan, uh, which we'll receive in February in order to consider that. There will then be a period of time which allows them to take that forward in order to make sure it's delivering the agreement, the agreed uh, improvements that they've set out within a remedial plan. Once that has been taken forward, we as a government will then be in a position to assess their performance and whether they're actually delivering on the remedial plan which they've submitted to us. Should they fail to do that uh, and meet those necessary standards, as I've just said to uh, Jamie Green, uh, that could ultimately result in them losing the franchise. Uh, and they are aware of the potential implications that it has for them if they fail to deliver on what is set out within the remedial plan. And Mike Rumbles. Uh, presenting officer, I'd like to know in what way does Michael Matheson's remedial plan of January 2019 differ from Hamza Yousaf's performance improvement plan of January 2017. Cabinet Secretary. So, uh, the ultimate sanction if they fail to meet the requirements set out within the remedial plan and to deliver on it is that they could lose the franchise. Thank you. Move on to question two, Alec Neil. Presenting officer, can I ask the Scottish Government what action it will take regarding the cessation of trading and managing medical waste contracts by Healthcare Environmental Services Limited, including supporting the 150 workers who have been made redundant? Minister Jamie Hepburn. The Scottish Government is concerned about the situation at Healthcare Environment Services Limited and is taking a number of steps to respond. The company advised the NHS boards in Scotland on, 20, on the 7th of December that it was unable to continue to provide clinical waste collection services. NHS Scotland then implemented interim contingency arrangements to ensure clinical waste is appropriately stored, collected and disposed in line with industry regulations. There has been no impact on patient services. SEPA is monitoring the situation on a daily basis and is continuing to seek regulatory compliance. We will work with SEPA to ensure that the sites are cleared safely and all waste disposed of appropriately should this become necessary. There is at present no significant environmental risk and no risk to the well-being of local communities. There is obvious and clear concern for the workforce uh, and the impact on them. Uh, the company took up uh, the offer of pay support on the 27th of December 2018 when it made its employees redundant. Pay's partners attended a support event held in Shots on the 3rd and 4th of January and provided support to 125 individuals in attendance. We have also been in contact with representatives of the Redundancy Payment Service who are awaiting information from the company regarding employee details in order to progress redundancy payments. We're monitoring the situation and provide further support and take any further action as may be required. Alex Hill. Can I thank the Minister for his reply and also the assistance he, he and his department provided over the festive period in relation to pace. Uh, can I say as well as finding the HES workers jobs, the other top priority is for them to be paid the wages and other payments they are due. 
The company's bank, HSBC, has refused to release any funds since the 5th of December, which is why the workers didn't get paid. Will the minister now urgently contact the bank and demand that the necessary funds be released urgently to pay the workers all the wages they are due? And will he look at whether the Scottish Government, meantime, can provide urgent cash help to the workers who are owed their wages? And finally, on this point, can he urgently contact again the insolvency service, who this morning have advised workers that they are not entitled to redundancy payments due to the business not currently being declared insolvent? Minister. In relation to the, the first point, I'm certainly aware that the company has uh, set out the uh, difficulties that uh, it has said it has had in accessing finance from uh, its bank through uh, the usual banking services. I will undertake to uh, contact the bank uh, in coordination with the company to see if we can move that matter further along. Uh, clearly, if we can do so, my primary expectation is that would then result in payment to uh, the workforce. That would be the basis on which I would seek uh, to uh, intervene. Uh, in relation to the issue uh, about the contact from the insolvency service, uh, I think I would need to get more details of that. Certainly, uh, there is, are difficulties where a company aren't uh, in the process of administration, have declared themselves insolvent in terms of uh, work, workers being able to secure redundancy payments through that process. The information we've had is that there is another process underway. If uh, they've been advised otherwise, then I'll need to get the information and uh, look at that. And if I can get that from Mr Neil, of course, I'll commit to doing so. Alan Neil. Can I say I'll supply the Minister with the necessary information this afternoon, having just received it within the last half hour myself. Can I also ask the Minister, in terms of the causes of this company going down, uh, because Princess Anne opened the new facility in April, but in September, the UK Cabinet Office intervened in relation to the management of waste south of the border initially. And it appears that there are, well, certainly allegations that the UK Cabinet Office, and in particular a senior official called Colleen Kaiser Andrews, has been involved in an exercise in September to deliberately and systematically destroy this company, Healthcare International. Will the minister raise this urgently with David Livington, the minister for the cabinet office in London, because these are serious allegations, and I've certainly seen some indication that there is a degree of justification in at least making the allegation. Before the cabinet, before the minister replies, I hope Mr. Neil thinks seriously before naming officials who cannot answer back in this parliament in such a way and taking advantage of parliamentary privilege. Minister. Well, again, I would be cautious about commenting on allegations, the full detail of which I haven't seen. But again, if I can be provided with information, we can have a look at it. And if it's felt necessary to contact the cabinet office in light of the information received, then of course, again, I would commit to looking to do so. Thank you. Richard Leonard. Uh, what assurances can the Minister personally give to the communities in and around Shots that the waste currently stockpiled on the site in Shots is being properly stored according to the highest health and safety and public health regulatory standards? Minister. Uh, I can uh, give uh, that uh, assurance because what we have done uh, through uh, NSS, uh, Scotland uh, National Health Service, uh, National Services Scotland have put in interim uh, arrangements with uh, a range of uh, uh, companies, three licensed waste carriers covering the whole of Scotland for priority sites, that is large hospitals, and the other contracts are in place with specialist companies to provide community collections from smaller sites. So that will deal with uh, waste on an ongoing basis. I've already set out the steps that SEPA are taking. There is no indication that there is any uh, substantial risk to communities now, but that's why CEPA are involved. They're there on a daily basis and we'll continue to be informed by them. Question number three, Angela Constance. Thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government how it will support the CAIAM Europe Limited employees who were made redundant without notice and were not paid before Christmas. Minister Jamie Hepburn. The Scottish Government and its agencies have been working to support the former CAIAM employees in Livingston with PACE partnership support available from the 24th of December, two days after the company appointed an administrator. Uh, that support will continue uh, with, for example, a jobs fair scheduled to take place on the 17th of January in Bathgate. Our shared goal is to help those made redundant get back into work as quickly as possible. And earlier today, I spoke with the administrators, KPMG, about how we can support those who've been made redundant, secure the redundancy payments they will be entitled to. 
Angela Constance. Sign officer, will the minister condemn outright those responsible for the actions or inactions that led to over 300 workers being informed on Christmas Eve that they were being made redundant without notice and without pay? And by contrast, will he commend the warm and generous response of the wider West Lothian community and in particular community volunteers and council staff for organising a community hub collecting and distributing donations of toys, food and gift vouchers, uh, in addition to raising over £22,000 for those affected. Minister. Uh, well, let me say, I uh, recognise that uh, any administration or redundancy situation is going to be uh, particularly uh, upsetting, challenging for the individuals involved, for their families and communities. There is no good time of year for that to happen. This was a particularly uh, bad time of year for it to happen. On that basis, I do... I regret that the chief executive of the company didn't inform uh, the workforce uh, in person, as has been uh, well uh, reported, and that this was the juncture at which the company determined to go into uh, administration. Uh, but that said, I do uh, think that uh, we can all uh, commend the response from uh, the local community. It's uh, been very clear that the community has rallied round to raise funds, uh, to help on the, the ground with volunteers, alongside donations of of toys and food. It's shown the real strength uh, of community spirit within the area and uh, of course those who've been involved deserve uh, the highest commendation from uh, us all. Angela Constance. Side officer, the Minister will be aware that the Economy Committee this morning has begun to get its teeth into questions of transparency and due diligence that have to be answered about the Scottish enterprise investment of £850,000 into CAIAM. Uh, so will he instruct Scottish Enterprise to cooperate fully and frankly with the committee, but also confirm that this does not preclude any further investment to secure highly skilled jobs in West Lothian if a suitable buyer for the business can be found? And can he provide Parliament with an update on the efforts to find a suitable buyer for the business? Minister. Uh, well, let me say, I, I, I won't re-rehearse the, uh, the points I made earlier to the committee uh, about the expectation of due diligence being followed uh, in each and every circumstance where public funds uh, are awarded. Uh, of course, when that process is followed, it doesn't always result in the company that has been awarded those funds being able to sustain itself over the long te longer term, as has been uh, the case very sadly here uh, with CAIAM. I, I don't think I'd need to instruct a Scottish Enterprise to uh, respond to uh, any call from the committee. It would be my expectation that they would do so, uh, and I believe uh, they would respond to any request from uh, the uh, committee. In terms of uh, an update on uh, efforts to sell uh, the business, this is a matter I discussed with KPMG uh, earlier uh, today. They have informed me they have received in excess of 20 expressions of interest from uh, various interested uh, parties. Uh, and I can also say uh, that in relation to uh, ongoing uh, support from our public agency, Scottish Enterprise have already through the administrator, set out what support they may be able to offer any potential buyer. Gordon Lindhurst. <clears throat> uh, against the background of the bad mistreatment of the workers at Kayam, uh, what is the Scottish Government doing to ensure that companies in Scotland in receipt of regional select assistance or who are Scottish Enterprise account managed companies do not treat their workers similarly in future circumstances? Minister. Well, clearly any company is ultimately responsible for the manner in which it conducts itself with uh, its workforce. The Scottish Government's uh, perspective on fair work uh, is well known, and I think part of fair work should be a proper dialogue with employees about the circumstances that any company uh, finds itself in. So that would be one of my uh, expectations. We've set out some of the work that we plan to take forward in terms of conditionality around uh, regional selective assistance and other forms of uh, public support through the Fair Work First principle, and we'll set up more detail around that in due course. And Neil Findlay. Uh, can I endorse uh, Angela Constance's comments on the response to the community and indeed West Lothian Council and other partners in providing advice and support to employees affected by redundancy at Kayam? But the responsibility for the closure lies with the owner, Bardia Pazeski. However, on five separate occasions prior to 20, the 24th of December, Minister were, ministers were warned about major problems threatening pay and jobs at Kayam, a situation that ended up with 300 workers with no pay and indeed no job. Can the minister answer this directly? 
Did he at any point over the period between the 22nd of November and the 24th of December ask the company to inform workers that their jobs and pay were at risk? Minister. It, there was an uh, ongoing uh, process of engagement between uh, Scottish Enterprise and uh, the uh, company. The difficulty we had in the circumstances around uh, this particular situation is that it was never uh, one uh, similar situation at any given time. So it would change. So when we were first notified, it wasn't about the company. Close it was about finding a buyer. That was the first instance that we uh, were uh, contacted. And then thereafter, it was around uh, actions to secure funding and pursue a sale uh, proposal. It was only much later on that it became uh, apparent that there'd be the possibility of uh, administration. And uh, we have done everything in the intervening period of time to try and support uh, the company uh, and ultimately to support its workforce. And that's something we continue to do. Thank you. And that concludes topical questions.